a reading from the book of Genesis. After the man, Adam, had eaten of the tree, the Lord God called to the man and asked him, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, but I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid myself. And he asked, Who told you that you were naked? You have eaten then from the tree of which I had forbidden you to eat. The man replied, The woman whom you put here with me, she gave me fruit from the tree, and so I ate it. The Lord God then asked the woman, Why did you do such a thing? The woman answered, The serpent tricked me into it, so I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you shall be banned from all the animals and from all the wild creatures. On your belly shall you crawl, and dirt shall you eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike at your head, while you strike at his heel. The word of the Lord. I cry to you, O Lord, Lord, hear my voice. O let your ears be attentive to the sound of my pleading. iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But with you is found forgiveness, that you may be revealed. Israel hope for the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy, in him is plentiful redemption. It is he who will redeem Israel from all its iniquity. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, since we have the same spirit of faith 
according to what is written. I believed, therefore I spoke. We too believe, and therefore we speak, knowing that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and place us with you in his presence. Everything indeed is for you, so that the grace bestowed in abundance on more and more people may cause the thanksgiving to overflow for the glory of God. Therefore, we are not discouraged. Rather, although our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this momentary light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. As we look not to what is seen, but to what is unseen. For what is seen is transitory, but what is unseen is eternal. For we know that if our earthly dwelling, a tent, should be destroyed, we have a building from God, a dwelling not made with hands, eternal in heaven. The word of the Lord. out says the Lord and when I am lifted up from the earth I will draw everyone to myself Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Dominus vobiscum. Lectio Sancti Evangelii secundum Marcum. Jesus came home with his disciples. Again, the crowd gathered, making it impossible for them even to eat. When his relatives heard of this, they set out to seize him, for they said, He is out of his mind. And the scribes who had come from Jerusalem said, He is possessed by Beelzebel, and by the prince of demons, he drives out demons. Summoning them, he began to speak to them in parables. How can Satan drive out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand. That is the end of him. But no one can enter a strong man's house to plunder his property unless he first ties up the strong man. Then he can plunder the house. Amen, I say to you, all sins and all blasphemies that people utter will be forgiven them. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an everlasting sin. For they had said, he has an unclean spirit. His mother and his brothers arrived. Standing outside, they sent word to him and called him. A crowd seated around him told him, Your mother and your brothers and your sisters are outside asking for you. 
But he said to them in reply, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking around at those seated in a circle, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. Verbum Domini. It seems like the last week our community has had many celebrations and much reason to rejoice with the ordination of Father Matthew. I have to get used to saying that. Father Matthew last week and him celebrating his first Mass in Hansville. And it was wonderful that our viewers at home could experience his first Mass of Thanksgiving. But also this weekend, Father Joseph's 25th anniversary, 25 years as a priest, begins today in Hansville. The celebrations begin at the shrine right now as I speak. He's probably preaching right now, and he'll preach to you tomorrow here. So I want to encourage all of our viewers, not that you would tune out anyway, but Tomorrow is a very special Mass uh, for Father Joseph. Father Joseph is the very first priest of our community, the Franciscan Missionaries of the Eternal Word. Uh, he's the very first priest uh, that Mother Angelica uh, kind of, you can say, scouted out as, uh, as an engineer. Father Joseph was going to Mass here, and the sisters saw this man going to mass single and they thought hmm we ought to start praying for this guy and before you know it uh, mother angelica is walking in the studio and i think some of you may might know this story but she's walking by and father joseph is working on a camera and mother just walks up to him and says you're going to help start my first men's community Father's like, or at that time, Wayne, Wayne Wolf. What? I'm going to do what? So that goes to show you that you never know what's around the corner. Uh, a cloistered nun coming around the corner saying, you're going to help start my men's, first men's community. If it wasn't for that, I wouldn't be here. Thank God for Father Joseph answering God's call. In the first reading today, I encourage you to go back and to really read the book of Genesis from the very beginning because it's good to see salvation history from the very beginning, how God intends things from the very beginning, how God creates his creation with order, all the way from creating the heavens and the earth and all of those things under the earth the sea creatures, creating man in his image and likeness, creating a helpmate for man, woman, and seeing what happens when there is order in creation. When there's order in God's creation, there's friendship. And that's ultimately what God is after in this life for us and what we should be after is order is to be friends of god in a sense to we can say to walk in the garden with god just like god walked in the garden with adam and eve when there was order god desires that type of order that type of relationship with each one of us. But we see in today's reading what happens when sin enters the picture. 
disorder, chaos, the blame game, so to speak. And this is not God's will for us. John Paul II, when reflecting on what is known as the theology of the body, and this is not so much his thoughts, it's really drawing upon the fathers of the church and the sacred scriptures. He talks about when sin enters the world, sin, sin enters the world and causes a rupture. And this rupture is fourfold, really. He says that there's a rupture between God and man in our relationship with God. And we see this within the first reading. We see it throughout salvation history. And then there's a rupture between each one of us, our relationships with one another. So we see the relationship, there's a rupture between the relationship between Adam and Eve. And there's also this rupture inside of us, this interior rupture, this interior disobedience that each one of us experiences. And there's also a rupture between God and creation, God and the cosmos. You see, original sin not just affects our relationship between God and man, but it, it affects the entire universe. Fulton Sheen used to say that the original sin, he gave the analogy of a, a discordant note entering into a magnificent chorus or a symphony. Now this never happens with our choir, ever. They're perfect. This happened when the friars used to sing with Derek. The friars, Derek had to work with the friars and it was a mess some nights. Derek will tell you. And what happens when a discordant note, when, when a note is out of pitch or not saying that Derek hits the wrong key, you know, sometimes. He never does that either. What happens when that happens? All, all, all of a sudden, there's this, there's a jar. And it's hard to kind of, it's hard to pick up the pace. It's hard to pick up where you left off. And there's something very beautiful about order in creation. That's why... Within the sacred liturgy, that's why we have so much throughout the week. That's why we want to have sacred music in the liturgy because the liturgy is where primarily we meet, we come into contact with Almighty God, where we re recover order in our lives again. And sacred music brings about that in the soul, doesn't it? When we hear sacred music. There's something about an order in music that creates order within us. It lifts our hearts and minds to God, and it helps us to think about the transcendent. And it helps us to walk out of here, hopefully wanting to live better ordered lives. But the consequences due to that fall, Fulton Sheen says that the original sin is like the worst possible note, the discordant note entering into God's creation, God's order, God's purpose. And then that, that creates chaos. And we see that in the readings. It creates disobedience. It creates division. It creates, you see what happens between the relationship between man and man. 
uh, man and husband, Adam and Eve. You see what happens between Cain and Abel. Brother murders brother. This is not part of God's will. It's not part of God's creation. It's not ordered properly. But this reading gives us hope in the book of Genesis because Fulton Sheen says that on this very note, the note of disobedience, it's as if God starts over again on that note. On the note that enters in that causes a wreck, a rupture in our relationship with God, in our relationship with one another, in our interior struggles, God starts over and brings about within that note another beautiful harmony. He ultimately brings about redemption, the promise of a Savior, the promise that he would bring, the Savior would come into this world once again, and by his death and resurrection would bring order into this world. And crush the head of the one who causes division. Crush the one of the one, Satan, that causes disorder. And in this reading, God goes looking for Adam. Remember, sin causes us to turn away from God. Sin causes us to turn our backs on God. Not only God, but sin causes us to turn our backs on one another too. And this disharmony, this disorder in creation was not present at the beginning. We could have imagined what the music would sound like without disharmony. Even in heaven, the music that we hear here on earth, as good as it is, as perfect as it is, is a foreshadowing of what we will hear in heaven. And it is heavenly some days, I have to admit. But it's only a foreshadowing of what we will experience, the perfect symphony, the perfect choir in heaven. And that's what we should strive for when we come to Mass, is to enter into that order, God's order. And strive after friendship with God. That we're part of the family of God. And when we strive after being friends with God and being obedient with him instead of being disobedient, this is where true freedom lies. This is where our true freedom lies in, about being obedient to God, about being obedient to his promptings. The first prayer of the Mass says, O God, from whom all good things come, grant that we who call on you in our need may at your prompting discern what is right and by your guidance do it. This, re this prayer says, so much theology that every step of the way it's God who is the one who is initiating the, this relationship this friendship this calling to friendship it's God who is the one who is sustaining this friendship and it's God who's the one who is bringing ultimately this friendship that we have with him to completion did that make sense? All along the way, it's really, it's God who is the one who is prompting us. What does God say to after the original sin? Where are you? It's not as if God doesn't know where Adam is. God knows everything. 
He's omniscient. He's all-knowing. But it's by us, it's by our disobedience, it's by us turning away from sin or from Him and falling into sin, into disorder. That causes chaos in our lives. That causes disorder in our lives. And so God desires us to be ordered, to be properly ordered. And where we experience this on this earth, the church would say this constantly throughout the tradition, is within the sacred liturgy. We experience God's word being read to us, God speaking to us. We experience offering ourselves to God in the holy sacrifice of the Mass and receiving his body and blood to heal us and bring that order to perfection. May God assist us at every step of the way. Again, it is God who is the one who has called us to this relationship. He calls, just like he says to Adam, where are you? He says that to each one of you. I think every one of us has experienced this in our lives, whether we're really practicing the faith, we're very fervent in our Christian profession, and we feel the Lord prompting us and ask, asking us, where are you? But we even experience this when we're far away from God. If you've ever experienced being far away from God, and I think all of us have at some time in our life, all of us in our conscience, we feel there's something prompting us, someone prompting us. Where are you? There's plenty of people out there listening right now, probably, that aren't close to God in their friendship with God, but within them they feel called, they feel this interior call, where are you? Where are you? Only Jesus answers that question. Jesus comes and teaches us the meaning about who we are. And he shows us what it means to be ordered. To offer our lives as a sacrifice of praise. 